Welcome back to the Sports Not interview. And today we are focusing our attention on Major League Baseball. Of course, the playoffs now in session. And joining us, former Major League Baseball general manager Jim Duquette hosts the Power Alley every weekday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Sirius XM MLB Radio. Jim, thanks for being with us. Let's jump right into your former team, uh, the New York Mets. They say goodbye to Buck Showalter just a year after he wins NL Manager of the Year. Talk about his dismissal. Obviously, disappointing year in New York for the Mets. Uh, you think that was justified? Is it the situation where things happen and, look, somebody's going somebody's gonna to take the bag on this one? Uh, what happened with Showalter in New York? Uh, Scott, thanks, thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, his, the Showalter thing is uh, it's, it's uh, interesting because, you know, he's had a longstanding uh, career. Uh, in Major League Baseball, and you, when you hire him, you know what you're getting, right? You had an excellent baseball man, uh, hasn't hasn't well, you know won the World Series, but has come close a couple times, got himself to the postseason. Experience uh, handles clubhouses really well. Your interaction with the front office isn't always a smooth uh, transition, but, so that's always a part of that. But um, like you said, they won over 100 games last year, and they underachieved. You know, uh, they got bounced in the first round there. As they, they lost the division. I think that didn't help him if you go back a year ago. Yeah, he's manager of the year, but not finishing the job against the Braves to win the division. Then you get you you lose to the Padres in the wild card round. So there's a little questions there. Then you have the highest payroll in the history of the sport and you underperform. And you know, obviously the trade deadline came and they traded all those high profile guys. And, and they didn't win. They end up well under 500. So somebody there has to take the blame. Now, listen, I think there's plenty of blame to go to the front office, to the general manager, even to ownership. Uh, and the players, you know, they try to take their, their blame. But in the end, because they have a new guy coming into the front office, the president of baseball operations, David Stearns, I think it was the time you could you could make the argument to start with a clean slate and let him pick his own manager. I think that's, in the end, why they made the decision a year ahead of his contract uh, expiring. Well, we hear a lot of it for those of us not in New York. I mean, you worked in the front office there of the Mets. You know the pressure in, and in Baltimore as well. Uh, how much is that? We hear about the pressure cooker that is New York. Uh, how much plays into decision-making there? Because it's just such a different animal. It's such a large media market. Uh, that factor in at all? Well, yeah, I think it does. I mean, the fan base is there, you know, in, uh, in New York, in Boston, Philadelphia. The, the, the pressure pressure cookers for sure. You know, it's a different level of expectation, and they created their own expectation too, right? Uh, not just the the payroll, but some of the things that they said uh, at, at the ownership level, where you know, winning a World Series in the first five years of his ownership. I mean, that creates a high bar. That you have to live up to. And listen, if you're in the front office, you kind of expect that anyway, right? Your fan yeah. base is rabid. If you want people showing up to your ballpark, like they they do at Yankee Stadium, you, that, that competition is real too, by the way, uh, for fans in the in New York area. But yeah, you do feel the pressure to win. Um, it's hard to shield your players from that. So you better find players that can, can win in New York or at least can handle the pressure when you don't play well, they boo you. Uh, that That's not for everybody, right? I mean, you know, they'll boo the front office, they'll boo the owner too. So, you know, it's more of, of how they uh, display their affection for you or their displeasure <laughs> uh, you know, too. So I think that part of it, you know, it does create another level of pressure that you don't have to experience in other towns. One last uh, part on the regular season, and that is we go to the other coast with the probably the second or 1A most disappointing team, of course, in Major League Baseball, the San Diego Padres. Now, it looks like the Padres are going to do the opposite of the Mets. They're going to keep their manager and their front office, A.J. Preller, in place. Um, is that is that we just talked about the pressure cooker that is New York. San Diego is nowhere near that from a media market. What about the Padres? What did you see from them this year? Uh, and, and why do you think that they could just not put it together? You know, the, the hard part there is, uh, you know, their general manager Preller has, I think three more years left in his contract, Bob Melvin, the manager who's an experienced, very good manager himself. He has one year left. So there was some question that Bob might end up not making it. There was a, fr a friction between the GM and the manager at times, which is not unusual. I know people will say that, oh, it's, it's, it's bad. Like, 
the GM and the, and the manager, they don't always have to agree on things. Uh, but I, I do think that when you saw the, it was really a, a feast or famine type roster, right? They had the high profile, uh, high salary guys, and they didn't have a lot of depth behind that. So when some of these, uh, you know, Machado had some injuries and was underachieving or Xander Bogarts early in the year, when you had those type of underachieving guys, they, they lost, I think they won one game uh, in one, uh, one run games uh, or, or extra innings. It was some ridiculous, I think it was maybe it was extra <laughs> innings. They were like 0 for 12. It's really hard to accomplish that, uh, you know, feat, so to speak. And so I think that, you know, there's a lot of those things. Hitting with runners in scoring position was a problem all year. They had a multitude of problems that they really couldn't put a finger on. It's like, it was like a leaking dike. Every time you put your finger on one spot, another leak would crop up, and they never could figure out. And they, I don't think they won uh, until the end of the year more than uh, four games in a row. Yeah, they could not put together a streak. All right, let's jump into the baseball playoffs now. Of course, uh, underway, the wild card round. The Twins end their 18-game losing streak in the postseason, which is incredible and good for them. The Diamondbacks come out and win as well early in the week. Um, this wild card round, wh what team do you expect maybe to come out of this round and maybe go deeper in the playoffs as a surprise? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I think that um, – you know, Arizona has gotten off to a really good start against Milwaukee. I, I don't, it's funny because I don't have that love, uh, that warm and fuzzy feeling about that team because they'd have so many uncertain uh, uh, aspects. Texas ended up winning against Tampa. If you had asked me, I thought Tampa was the team to really keep an eye on out of the wild card round because they had a really good team. The, the division was tough. Uh, we'll see, you know, I mean, it's must win now today, you know, for them. Uh, so, you know, I think, um, you know, I, I think the one team uh, was, at least going in for me, that was a sleeper was Toronto. They lost yesterday with their best pitcher in the mound. So already it's it's in shambles to some degree. The wild card round. The Philadelphia Phillies are the team. Like you know, everyone talks about how good Atlanta was. That next round, if Philly can win, which looks like they will, that is, I think might be the best uh, round in the postseason. That DS round, Philly versus Atlanta, coming up this weekend if it goes that way. So, uh, you know, Philadelphia, I think for sure, because of their run last year and because of how versatile they are, I, they're a team to watch for sure. Yeah, and of course, yeah, you're right. The Brave, everybody's kind of crowning the Braves already uh, because of the season they had. But the Phillies, man, they're just scrappy. You saw it again. Uh, at the beginning of the playoffs here in the wild card round. So, so I, I agree with you there uh, on the American league side. It's night. Nice. Listen, I like new blood in the baseball playoffs, right? So you see what the Baltimore Orioles were able to do uh, this season. Remarkable stuff. Do they have the momentum going? Do you think that they have the ability to go deep into this playoffs? Yes. They won over hundred games. We get all that, but playoff baseball is a completely different animal. What's your thoughts on the Orioles? So, you know, I think they do have that ability to, to run a, a deep, have a deep run. Um, but here's the, here's the one thing. They have a lot of young players, too. You know, and, and in uh, that becomes uncertainty. How do they handle the, the postseason? Like, during the regular season, they were chased. They had pressure, you know, uh, for the division title. Uh, Tampa continued to press. They never they seemed to get two or three games um, away from the Orioles to win the American League East. So they constantly had to deal with that nightly pressure. And that does prepare you to some degree for the postseason. Now with, with you know, get the hyped up attention, uh, the extra pressure, the fans, all of that kind of, you know, we'll see how this young uh, team handles it. Um, I think there's some people concerned about their offense and the length of their offense. I'm not as concerned about that. I'm more concerned about their, their back end of their bullpen. You know, they had Felix Batista, who was probably the best closer in the sport. And he had Tommy John surgery at the end of the year. He was trying to come back, couldn't make it. And I think that is such a huge weapon that they won't have. I think it's going to be hard to overcome that. But um, their starting pitching is better than I thought, too. You know, it, it emerged down the stretch. So I think they're one of those wild card teams uh, that could go deep, but it also wouldn't shock me if, uh, because of the lack of a closer, they got they got bounced early. What about the Astros? So the Astros, obviously, in the playoffs, good team. That dogfight that was that division race. Uh, but the Astros didn't seem like the Astros of last year. They seemed just a little bit off. Uh, but they come in. Uh, they're, to me, a dangerous team as well, just because of that experience. The experience in the postseason, as you just mentioned, uh, yeah. opposite with the Orioles, with the young, with the young players, uh, to me, is something you probably shouldn't count out, right? 
they're, they're always dangerous. You know, the, the league, <laughs> really, the uh, division, uh, the American League division, I mean, it's all always goes through Houston. Like, I, we cover the postseason for Sirius XM. I feel like I should have uh, have taken out and, and bought a condo in Houston. We were there so much in the last six years. I mean, they're in it every year, right? They've been in the World Series three times. They've won it, I think, twice. So, so for me, they're a team you can't go, you can't uh, fall asleep on. The one issue that they've had, they haven't had the depth that they've had in the past. You know, their start rotation's been a little spotty. Uh, the bullpen's been okay. Offensively, they're very top heavy. You know, the bottom of the lineup is maybe as strong. So, you know, and, and you don't see a lot of repeat teams, right? I mean, we haven't seen a repeat uh, outside of the Yankees since I think it was Cincinnati Reds back in the early 1990s. So uh, it's hard to do. Um, you know, the one team that could do it's the Astros. But, you know, I think with when you look at it, that's what makes, I think, the American League so wide open is because there are a lot of um, issues or concerns with each of those teams there in the American League. Jim, before we let you go, a quick question. Uh, there's a story floating around about baseball perhaps expanding, and one of the teams uh, that's popping up is, of course, your your cousin Dan's former team. Now that doesn't exist. It's actually the Washington Nationals, which is the right. Montreal Expos. Do you see a possibility of baseball returning to Montreal? Boy, I, I would love it. You know, I've got a lot of family members up there still. So uh, I'm, I'm French Canadian myself. I'd love to go back and see him. But, you know, I think it's a fascinating thing for me is if they can build a stadium and it sounds like, you know, they've committed to one downtown uh, in the downtown area. That to me has always been the way that baseball could exist in Montreal is, you know, it's a growing city. I was there uh, a few years ago and I could not believe I used to we used to go there as a Mets executive. We played the Expos, as you know, all the time. Um, and I was on that trip most of the time. And from where it was then back in like the, the 2000s to where it is now, it's amazing how the growth. So I think it's an area that um, is uh, one that Major League Baseball is definitely going to consider. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, I think, competition for those uh, for those expansion teams. Obviously, in Charlotte, you hear Portland a lot, you hear Nashville a lot. But I do think Montreal is in that uh, short list of five or six teams. All right. Jim Duquette, you can catch him every weekday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern time on Power Alley on Sirius XM's MLB radio. Uh, Jim, as always, thank you, man. I appreciate it for being with us here on the Sports Not interview. Yep, I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for having me on. We'll